Welcome to this week's episode of Hump Day News. Okay, so to start off with, there is a question that I hate to comment on, but I'm gonna do it anyway. How much sex should we be having? The reason I hate this is that we are looking for this level of normality, and there isn't such thing as normal when it comes to sex. We're all looking to compare our sex lives to someone else to work out, is what we're doing actually working for us? So when these studies come out, sometimes it makes me feel a little bit ick because you may have a lot of people looking at this data and thinking, oh my God, is my relationship over because I'm not having sex as much as other people are. So keep this bit of information in mind because sometimes it's also fun to comment on these stats and have a little bit of a giggle if this doesn't actually fit into your life so you can celebrate that you are different to this level of norm that they're trying to project. Okay, so for Australians, it's once a week. Now the issue I have with this is what are we counting? Is it actual sex? Is it something else? Is it a hookup? You know, what is sex? And who was actually asked? Were you called to respond on how much sex you're having? Because I wasn't. Now Brits, sorry guys, maybe Brexit's got something to do with it, but it's less than once a week. But Americans, it's two to three times a week. I'm kind of going to assume that whoever wrote this article was an American. But whatever we say about the research, this particular article is stating that Americans and Australians are having far less sex than they were in the past. So maybe we should not necessarily be focusing on a number, but upping our game in the bedroom to an amount of sex that works for us and our partner. But in order to work that out, guys, you're actually gonna to have to have a conversation about what you want from your sex life and how much sex you want to have and why. Okay, so now for a new dating trend or a dating app, I should say, because we definitely don't have enough of those. Now, don't worry, it's not another trend word like ghosting or breadcrumbing, but it is an app called Refrigerating. Yes, so you can match with somebody according to the contents of your refrigerator. Now, just when I thought this actually started to sound like an okay idea, you know, when we look at things to have in common, you know, eating is one thing, what happens if you have someone who loves a steak and someone who is a, a vegan? You know, that's never gonna go well together. We're looking for a commonality and points of interest. So maybe putting up photos of your refrigerator is a good idea and you can show what type of person you are. Are you a healthy person? Are you a junk food addict? What kind of night can you expect if that person's gonna cook for you? But as I continue to read this article, this fridge is also connect, sorry, this app is also connected to a fridge that's created by Samsung. So the contents in your fridge get automatically uploaded onto this app. What I loved is the quote from Samsung. Simply upload an image and let the world know what kind of person you are. Because as the saying goes, you are the contents of your fridge. I kind of feel like I should maybe take you over to my fridge, open it up, and maybe you can get an idea of who I am. But I really don't think if I'm looking for the ideal match, that's going to necessarily be an indicator of everlasting love. But it can be kind of a funny joke to start off with. But you're going to have to buy the fridge to get the dating app. So now I've left the best for last. So for all of you marijuana lovers out there, or for those who are looking for a natural alternative to spice up your love life, we've got a good study for you. So they have now found that marijuana use prior to sex doubles the chances of having a satisfying orgasm for women. Sorry guys. So with this, I'm not supporting drug use. I am just, repeating the studies that are out there. So it's interesting now when we have a look at the world of medical marijuana and we have the government now recognizing it, you know, the question is going to be, if we look at something like sexual dysfunction and even looking at sexual dissatisfaction as a dysfunction, are we going to eventually see a legalization of marijuana to be able to use in the bedroom? Who knows? If you are interested in this though, I urge you to have a look at canisexuality and I have written an article about that because there's some interesting things about how to incorporate cannabis into the bedroom. However, again, sitting in Australia, I don't encourage drug use. I'm just literally reporting on the stats. Okay, so thank you for joining me for my hump day news this week. 
If you have an Ask Dr. Nikki question or you have a topic that you want to hear my opinion on, please jump onto my Facebook page and send me a message. Happy hump day. Bye.